Welcome back to our continuing coverage of the NALCS Summer Split. We're shifting into gear for our next fight. It's Complexity versus Cloud9. Yeah, so far, Complexity have shown they can punish any team that dares to overlook them. Yeah, they actually defeated Cloud9 in week one and then most recently took down the number one Dignitas last week and then looked very good doing it. And it's interesting because in the games they win, their opponents are actually making some big mistakes and then Complexity plays very well after that. However, against EG last week, they got obliterated by a team that's in the bottom of the standings because they didn't have a good early start. Right. So one win doesn't make a streak for complexity, and we have to see which complexity shows up today. Absolutely. The same could be said for Cloud9, who have had games where they look to be back to their dominating ways, only to stumble again. And honestly, last week they had a shot to pull themselves into a tie for first, but instead LMQ beat them and took that spot for themselves. Yeah. So Cloud9, once again, end of the week, kind of in the middle of the pack, which is not where they're used to being. It's the first split where Cloud9 have yet to hold first place. Halfway through the split, the two down defending champions need to step up and start taking care of business. Well, in the tough streets of the North American League, teams can't afford to make mistakes in the early game. Or as Cloud9 learned the last time they faced complexity, it will cost them the game. I feel like Cloud9 got a lot weaker like ever since like last split. We ended up taking the game off of him because Robert got a triple kill and it just kind of snowballed off that. The double bust could go over to Robert actually! That is huge for an AD carry! Watch his second kill to come in! Absolutely for Robert actually! A third kill to come in! I think against Complexity, making the littlest mistake is basically going to lose the game. Any sort of small advantage that you can give away, it's going to lead into a big snowball. They had to switch a player recently, like Kez for Broken Shard. So that always sucks when you have to make a roster swap. Especially when you have no control over it, it's really bad. I guess they're adapting to having Kez in the team. I mean, I've been only in this team for like a few weeks. So we were still trying to work on our synergy. We just got to learn to play consistently because every game we've been losing so far has been very snowball-ish. So we just have to work on that. Well, it seems like they have everything in order of what's causing the losses. Hopefully, yeah. they get the early game lead to give them such a dominating win as usual. Absolutely. Complexity knows how to play when they're ahead, right. but not so much when they're behind. They just keep trying to make big plays with gold deficit. That's right. And for more on this match, let's sound it down to Kobe. All right. Thank you, Riv. I'm here with the Complexity coach and analyst, Mr. Koobs. Now, you guys, uh, being in last place, you receive a lot of criticism from the fans. A lot of teams have been going with these social media blackouts. Have you guys actually decided to go with that, or have you embraced it? I think social media blackouts for certain players and teams work, but I think for us, uh, I've worked with my players to have it not affect them as much and just look at it in more of a upbeat and motivation, kind of, in the sense that, hey, no one believes in us, we have a couple fans, let's go hard. So I think for us it's all right, and as the season progresses, I think uh, hopefully that criticism kind of dies down and we become a stronger team. Well, you guys definitely have a big chance here. A new patch changing up a lot of things. On this 4.10 patch, it seems like a good opportunity for you guys because you have a lot of players that like to play champions that are not very popular among a lot of other players. What do you think of the, your team's chances with this 4.10 coming in? I think 4.10 has been an interesting patch in the sense that obviously the big one is AD carries who are changed with the Infinity Edge changes and the nerf to lifesteal in the Bloodthirster. I think what we see now a lot, and it goes over all the scenes, is you're seeing a lot more of the support style top lanes with uh, Lulu and Kale. Now OGN's running Gragas top a little bit. And the supports, we're seeing more Nami, a little bit of Sona. So I think the picks in general, uh, whoever adapts the fastest to each meta usually gets a huge advantage. And I'm very confident that we have done that, and I'm really looking forward to see how we do today. All right, well, you're facing Cloud9, who has historically been one of the best at adapting. Now, you guys have beaten them already, though. What is the team's confidence like coming into this one? Well, that first game was our first one in the LCS, and although I don't think we played very well, neither team really played, I think, their A game, per se. But we were able to get that win. So heading into this one, um, we have had Kez now for, I think it's our fourth week with him. So I think we're very comfortable. And going into this game, if we bring our best, I think we have a chance, and that's all you can ask for in this game. All right, well, good luck. We are now going to send it back to the guys at the desk to get this game started. Thank you very much, Kobe, and let's do that right away. Let's check out the starting lineups. On the blue side, it is Complexity. That leaves West Rice in the top lane. Kez in the jungle. Probably in mid lane, I promise. Robert X Lee at 80 carry and Bubba Dove at support with his stash. On the red side, of course, it is Cloud9 in blue shirts. Balls in the top lane, yeah. BDOs in the jungle, high in mid. Sneaky on 80 carry and Lemon Nation on support. 
And we'll see if it is true. Does Cloud9 adapt the fastest? Can Meteos get Lee Sin? I know. <laughs> Does it matter? Because it's strange. So much of Cloud9 uh, in the past has been other teams trying to react to them, right? So much of the top is like, there's questions teams ask. How do you get to the top? How do you become the best team? Right. A lot of people say, look what the best team does and mimic it until you become the best. But what that ends up often doing is, if you're mimicking a strategy, the best you can become is slightly worse than the team that you're mimicking. Yeah. Because they've been doing it for longer and they're better at it. So when Cloud9 came on the scene, they had a very fresh and new style of play. But it hadn't necessarily, uh, it hadn't necessarily been seen before. And then right. now, when they're in the middle of the pack, they keep trying these new things. That's why we see Meteos being one of the only jungle Rengar people right. that have tried it in North yeah. America. That's kind of why we see High playing mid lane champions that other mid laners haven't been favoring, like the Fizz when he played Kha'Zix a couple games in a row, mm -hmm. or when Sneaky and Lemon Nation are the first to try out different AD carry and support combos. Yeah. Like and the Ash Zyra, right? Exactly. Like the Ash Zyra back in the summer when they were such a dominating team. And I really do feel like this 4.10 patch is a big opportunity for them to set the standard again as far as what becomes the best picks. Because I think the other teams in the previous patches had really caught on. And they were 100% on it. And Cloud9 kept trying to do different picks right. that just weren't any better. And maybe their analytical skills now can give them that slight edge over the other teams. I remember in the beginning, they would always be like, you know, we, we look at what Korea thinks is OP, and then we play it to our style. Mm -hmm. You know, they would take it, but right, they wouldn't try to match it. it they twist it. They do what they needed to. And it always worked out for them. Now, will that mistake happen? We look at complexity. If they can yeah. grab that early lead, they know how to carry a snowball. But how do you stop that if that's the only way to really bring out the W? I know, because it, in one side... You don't just want to play safe because then that allows right. complexity to bully you. Yeah. You just have to play comfortably, right? You just don't. That's true. You can't be afraid of making a big mistake. Otherwise, you're going to make a big mistake or just end up doing nothing. Right. Yeah, this I, is I think Cloud, Cloud9 should just play this one comfortably. This is also another time that Cloud9 looks at somewhat of a different team. Last time this was with Broken Shard. Now Kez is there. Yeah, they've seen Kez from week to week play mm -hmm. against other teams, but it's still a different dynamic they're bringing as they match up. Now we're going to be heading into Champion Select, and we'll see what kind of homework was done pre-game as we get into the complexity Cloud9 match. Well, the Rengar <laughs> band. Rengar homework. There it is. Yeah. And like uh, Complexity's manager coach said, there's been a lot more focus on the kind of AP supportish top laner. So Lulu, being a flex pick anyways, and has been for a while, she's out of there. Wouldn't be shocked if we saw another Kale ban as yeah. well. Although I don't know how proficient Westrice actually is on the champion. The notebook of Lemon Nation, of course, trying to make some smart choices. A lot of homework to be done by Cloud9, their analyst Charlie, mm. obviously by Complexity, their coach Koops. Looks like it won't be a win. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Looks like Cloud9 is a lot. No, not really. <laughs> of course, we have to just keep reiterating. For some reason, Medios has not won a game this split when he's not playing Lee Sin, yeah. but has a 100% win rate when playing it. Obviously, two junglers being banned away from Medios with the Rengar and the Lee Sin. Yeah. He's a great Elise player. He just hasn't been able to find success with this split. The Kale does get forcefully banned out. They probably squeamed a little bit. Would have wanted that on their side, maybe. And he gets his jungler right away. Yeah. They really targeted Medios heavily yep. in this pick and ban phase. Lucian would still be on the board, but that's not necessarily what Sneaky has been tunneling on. We know sustained supports are much stronger. There's no need to take a jungler very early unless they just want to do the rest of their picks via counter picks. This will really kind of tell us what tier list of champions Cloud9 has put together in their heads. High brings out Ziggs. Safe play in the middle with some Siege to himself. Falls onto the safe play of Bernectin. So not too much shown by the hand of C9. Like you said, comfort. We brought yeah. in with the past changes. Balls is a great Renekton player, and Renekton has relatively, in power, been buffed this patch. Just because there is more likely to be an isolated lane scenario in the top lane, because more teams will be unwilling to swap up there because it costs them more in Dragon Gold if they give that up. Uh, and lane bullying is absolutely important up there, especially since he has sustained built into his kit as right. well. Uh, and then the Ziggs is twofold. It shoves in lanes, it also denies the pick from Prowling. 
Sonda being picked up once again. Damn. This is going to be for Robert X. Lee this time. This is also with Lucian up on the board. One yeah. of the most picked 80 carries at the moment. So they picked everybody Tristana. Everybody up on the board. They picked Tristana over every yeah, 80 carry in every. League of Legends. So no Caitlyn, no Kog'Maw. Kog'Maw was actually banned in pretty much every single OGN game. And immediately they pick a stronger laner in Caitlyn. One of the favorites of getting that Infinity Edge in her build and really having a power spike just from how she can build. One of the only, not only I should say, but one of the ones that can favor an Eye Edge first. Sneaky knows he could have a strong lane here. We see that probably is going to be on Yasuo this time. Yeah. Is that Sona? Yes, it is. An interesting thing, uh, Tristana's ult can be Yasuo ulted on top of. Oh, yeah, which displacement. Which is kind of cool. Right. If they want to go with that. So giving a little bit of extra Yasuo synergy. Prawley liking the AD mids with the Athene's Unholy Grail nerf. Might be looking to attack Ziggs a little bit. And this yeah. support pick by Lemon will be interesting. If they go with Thresh, they might end up losing the sustain battle if they get hit by a few of those explosive shots. But the kill potential would be higher. This, though, gives them a lot more kiting ability. Very safe game there. A lot of AD coming out of the side of complexity on this. Looks like they have a team that isn't going to be really able to activate on anything in those early games. Maybe they can, maybe they can't, but that's a very squishy bottom lane to start with. Yeah, little, little curious about Complexity's overall team composition. They are a team that has typically won only when they pull far ahead in the early game. Right. Because they do have good map movements and know how to close out games and make plays when they have big gold leads. But it's very hard for them to get a big gold lead when they're weaker in all three lanes early in the game. Yeah. So they're kind of at the mercy of Cloud9 in this one. And something that hurts coming out of Champion Select and you kind of feel that sinking, mm -hmm. knowing the lanes are right up and better than you right away. The game's about to get underway. We'll see if that's all true. So let's gaze into the future and see who will win. According to you, at LOLESports.com, 85% of you say it's going to be Cloud9. As long as it's not over 90%, safe. Yeah. Otherwise, we'd be seeing that time. <laughs> sure. If you see curse. things go and sell for Cloud9, though, Update your vote by tweeting us at LOL Esports. Use the hashtag COLWIN or C9WIN. We'll be checking that back to get real-time reactions. Or if Cloud9 is winning, just keep voting for them. Push that over 85%. It's going to be a tough game for Cloud9, or for Complexity. I don't see Cloud9 really letting themselves fall into any mistakes. Last time, we saw Medios go in with the Kha'Zix in the game we talked about where Complexity got the early triple kill. He was pretty low on health. It's kind yeah. of an un natural thing for Meteos to do, go into a gank when it may not work. And that was also in week one, where Cloud9 was very recently re-acclimating themselves to high in the mid lane. We do have yeah, to keep that in mind. True. The lung surgery that, that he had, that he had in the offseason, and the fact that they played with Link, and then back with high. It's been a bit of a recovery process. All right, game six, or game two of week six, I should say. Yeah. As we get on, Complexity coming off the blue side, Cloud9 coming off a of red. We get this one on to the Rift. You can see Lemonation getting the cuff stretched out. And he's ready to play. Spell Thieves on both of the supports. Going to be bringing in some cash money in the early game. And we see, again, Balls likes the Doran's Blade as well to West Rice's shield. Yeah, well, it's the aggression of mm -hmm. Renekton. He holds the early game edge so clearly over Shivana that, that he just wants it for the AD. I'm actually a little surprised we're not seeing Longsword Renekton's because that would build into the team at fast. Right if they're really bullying that heavily. But of course, that would make them weaker to ganks, <laughs> and the early game ganks of Kez are quite potent. Seeing them getting themselves back into a very good situation. Kez can make the moves to get himself back in the jungle if he's been put behind. A very smart jungler, good addition to complexity. We'll see if they can use that to get themselves back up in the standings. Looking into this game, Cloud9, seven and five. Complexity is three and nine. Looking to put a win in the column. Elimination on Morgana this time definitely won't make it easy in the duo lane. Looks like we are going to get that standard matchup. The early sweeper clear. Very yeah. nicely placed. Could have been anywhere. It makes the invade much more possible or dangerous. It really forces complexity into a big sense of unease, and they'll have to do some guesswork. One CS for Sneaky. He's feeling pretty good. 73 to 27. It's starting yeah. to shift. People remember last game. One CS not changing people's minds, <laughs> for sure. And last game we mentioned, 
how TSM had lost to every team above them in the standings and beaten every team below them. Yeah. One of the main reasons Cloud9 still appears as such a strong team is against teams in the top five of the LCS. So that's kind of the, the cool kids club that's happened in this split. Yeah. They're five and three. They're actually doing very well against the good teams. Right. It's the teams at the bottom they've been struggling against. They've lost to Complexity and they've lost to EG, which puts them in the middle of the pack. Right. It's the consistency that Cloud9 needs to reattain if they want to make the top of the standings. Yeah. And those types of things start by beating complexity up. And you, know, you can almost see that with the times of what happened in this last game. Cloud9 did lose, but it took complexity 25 minutes after their first inhibitor to close out the game. It's a little longer than usual. So Cloud9 still put up a fight. They still knew how to keep themselves in the game. It could be harder if they get the edge first. Meteos on the red buff. He's going to be getting that for himself. Two buffs to each jungler now. Let's see if they can make an impact here coming out of the jungle. Kai's a little bit slower here, and it's going to be top lane already for Meteos. A little bit strange here. Meteos is incredibly low. Yeah, saw that. Right now on Evelyn. And if he would have walked into that brush and there was an Elise laying in wait, uh, it would have been death. But because of the early ward they put, they knew where Kez started. So they know Kez is in the red jungle, meaning he's safe to gank at low health if West Rice overcommits. But with the place the wave is, this just looks like wasted time. And Renekton on full fury, a dangerous, dangerous Look thing to be looking at just out of range. God, I think everybody, any Renekton player can relate yeah. to the W just there. They may have been able to force the flash if that would have landed the stun. Another bind on Bubba Dub. Whew, Sona taking some good hits in the early game, not the tankiest. Yeah, do have to note that Bubba Dub has went with the Spell Thief's Edge on Sona, and one yeah. of the reasons he is so aggressively pressing up is he's trying to get his stacks out. So he wants to get the gold generation, the extra damage from the Spell Thief's Edge harassment passive. And he's getting a little bit punished for it health-wise, but obviously because he has sustain, he hasn't died yet. Probably trying to stay safe. One wall there, and actually very nice. It's going to keep the lane from pushing as well, so that works nicely in his favor. So much harass coming in from high. Loves playing that aggressive early game. Yeah, look at the sustain. Bubba Dub's back at full health already. This is working out very well for them. Bubba Dub hasn't even chugged the mana potion, so they can kind of stay here and trade back and forth. Sustain is definitely getting some love in the bot lane recently. Yeah. It's an interesting thing here with Sona. As long as they're not getting bursted out, mm -hmm. They will out sustain, and Sneaky hasn't built lifesteal items yet, so even though that trade looked so heavy-handed, Robert X Lee is going to be healing up pretty soon now, and Sneaky's having a little bit of trouble. As bad as this looks in the mid lane. Oh! The CS Got is it. close. Yeah, CS but is close! Wow, that was very aggressive from probably Medios in the right place at the right time. Kez couldn't even get in the initiation. Well, whoopsie daisy. That was a bad move going forward after being so crushed in the right. lane. And Meteos just with exquisite timing on Eve there. Makes the counter gank not a real possibility. Big for him. You can see even with going down, yeah, he stayed up in CS, but Complexity is going to have to worry about pink wards as well. Sinking money into that just out of base. Probably it's going to have to keep safe for Meteos and more ganks. Push down in the bottom lane, staying sustained, but that range is giving Sneaky a bit of an advantage here. 38 to 34, pretty even still. Yeah, but this is not the type of game complexity wins. Nope. Typically, we talked about it yeah. right from the picks and bans. They pick lanes that are typically going to be in danger or get bullied early, and then what moves are complexity really going to make? Cloud9 is absolutely at home. Back when they were successful, or the most successful, it was in the game where they could just pick lane bullies, mm -hmm. rely on their laning power, and then let Meteos make very smart, efficient decisions and be kind of that carry jungler that everyone had him first picked in fantasy because that's what they're <laughs> expecting this split. Hey, don't rag on me. Hasn't have to. <laughs> did you pick Meteos first? Maybe. All right. I did. Six minutes into this one, that first kill hovering on the side of Cloud9. Giving about a thousand gold lead. Hey. Whoa! Dragon's Descent. Some quick sixes here in the top uh, lane. They're fighting uh, back and forth. I don't know if West Rice really wanted to do that. Dragon's Descent in, flash out. So that happened. Oops. Yep, burns his flash for a couple CS. How do you repair you, that? Yeah. <laughs> do you call the jungler up? Because uh, now no. you know that lane is pretty much in his favor. You don't. We saw Gleeb talking about it last game. Once they lost early on, yeah. he was saying 
Yeah, I mean, we could have called our jungler down for a gank. Yeah. But then Vi could have been there, and it would have been turned around, especially against an Eve, who they have almost no vision of. He's got to fend for himself. Yeah. And without a flash, it becomes even more difficult. The flash. He was also down almost 20 CS on that engage, so you got to know that Renekton is going to hurt. Coming back in the lane, the Giants belts. The thing to have, I guess, right now. We'll see. Coming around the backside, those pink wards have not been utilized in the bottom lane. It's rather, I would say, purchased. Robert X Lee with these little sidestep hops really working for him. Yeah, that binding was perfectly positioned by Lemon Nation. If it wasn't for the flash of Robert X Lee, it was dead. Whee! Can he get the blue? So oh. close. Uh-oh. So close. Goes to Kaz, though. He just straight up timed that one. He thought... He needed him, probably. Because Cloud9 knew exactly when it had started as well, uh, it was a rough guess by High. Just about gave it to him. They would have really loved to have a blue buff on Meteos as well. So he could get a lower yeah. cooldown on his Eve ultimate as well as just spam hate spikes more in the jungle. But, so close. CS as well, close in the mid and the AD carries. Really, it's going to be balls here to give Cloud9 the upper hand. Got to look at both of these compositions as well. Everybody kind of want, wants the group, wants to go for damage. It's going to be perfect for the objective fights. High just throwing in Mega Inferno bombs as the rest of Complexity tries to get into the middle. Could be dangerous. Like we said, that early lead is a necessity for Complexity. Yeah. And I don't think they're getting any closer to having an advantage in this game. Especially looking at these item builds. It appears like Robert X. Lee is going Static Shiv with his first item. Which is not going to help against Caitlyn's Infinity Edge Rush. Generally, your Static Shiv or Zeal-type item comes after your big AD item. Right. And it also doesn't give any early lifesteal for Robert X. Lee. Very plateaued on damage for sure. Yeah. Hit a crit, it'll help, but you're not going to crit with but any damage. Like this. Oh, Lemon Nation. Oh, yeah. Okay. I was going <laughs> to say, it almost worked, but they ping pong back and forth, and he does get himself a kill. So he, maybe he can just finish the item he yeah. needs. It's about <laughs> a level five or six Sona walks into the brush against three people. Kills happen. Yeah. So a really nice lay in wait by complexity, knowing Lemon Nation's patterns. A little bit telegraphed right there. Lemon Nation wanted to get ward control in that brush, and complexity saw it coming. This is good. This means Complexity can now hold these positions. They're somewhat putting pink wards down. It's going to slow Meteos down a little bit, and that's exactly what they need. Wes Rice is doing well for himself in HP, but he's still hurting oh. on that farm, and it's going to come big when they need the team to get together. Robert actually a little harassed there. Sneaky going to push this one out, try to deny some CS maybe. Yeah, mainly the timing. It means they can shove in the lane generally mm -hmm. before Robert actually gets back. So really timely, Ace in the hole, based on the ward control in the lane brush, hopefully making up a little bit for Lemonation getting caught out of position. He did just finish the static shift. It looks yep. like they will not worry about bottom lane either. They are going straight to mid here. They're going to try to create their own pressure in the game. Yeah, it's going to be... Uh, they obviously rely on the sustain of Sona, so they don't need the lifesteal. Right. Well, Meteos gets spotted by Westrice and has to skedaddle. Oh, oh, maybe, possibly. He's got the flash. He's so waiting on this one. He just wanted to draw a little more pressure. He gets out, though. Has to blow that. Westrice still very hurt in the top lane. You can see it. They're calling a lot of complexity members there as well. Three members in the top lane. They put Trist. Robert X. Lee against Ziggs in mid now. So some lane swaps, yeah, by complexity. Mm -hmm. Probably now putting himself into a 1v2, meaning I don't think there's any way he defends this turret properly. Maybe Robert X. Lee can shove along the same lines as High and get some farm back, but he's also not going to have much immediate power in the mid lane. It looks like Complexity has downgraded both of their lanes by swapping right here, and they're going to probably lose this turret. Probably well, can't do much but put up a wall after that. It's a very low or very high cooldown. Goes down, knows it's going to be the lane going down, so he's there for the farm, but now this is to be pushed in High's face. It's just going to give him more farm if he, they don't have to move or decide to do anything. Not good moves by Complexity so far, putting themselves in this 2,000 gold deficit despite the nice catch on Eleven Nation, and the laning supremacy of Cloud9 will continue here. And it looks like they know it as well. Even being yeah. stronger, they want to hold this lead very slightly. Nothing with Dragon yet. 4.10 has definitely shown us the early Dragons. Not so much anymore. The standard lane slowing things down as well. 
Pressure for Prawley. Just trying to get Sneaky to not back. He is 9-7, to seven, so he can take a few shots and try to deny this CS. But it looks like Complexity, there we go. Yeah, they're hoping for vision control around Dragon, and they hope that they went back at the right time so the Meteos couldn't help them. They may be able to burst this one down fast enough. And Lemonation's a little bit squeamish about checking these brushes, so it was very good timing by Complexity to get in there. Definitely see where that kind of static shiv kind of comes in. Oh, Kaz. Looking dangerous on this one. Really getting that E attack out, and then you get the static shiv damage on your auto attack. So it's a little more, but like you said, not having full damage for a fight is very scary. Trist still looking to ramp up, though. And considering that Trist had the static shiv, and they're losing top lane, and they're down in gold, mm. and they're missing their bottom lane turret, the fact that they just straight up got an uncontested dragon is incredibly impressive by complexity. Or it's just a really big failure by Cloud9. Yeah. That's probably the bigger story here. They should have had ward control and they should have timed their backs better because a dragon like that against a team that is behind cannot happen if they want to become a number one team in North America. Whoa, that static shift definitely putting on a little extra damage with that auto attack. Lemon Nation down to half HP from a few shots in that explosive shot burning down. Pink Wards still on the minds of Complexity to keep eyes on Meteos, but they got to get them down. Being in inventory is not helping too much, and it looks like Kez is trying to do that right now as they head out towards blue. Cloud9 with that timer as well. So Kez actually tracking Meteos quite well mm -hmm. right now. Oh, no! Stolen by Prawley! That's not going to be a satchel charge as well. No rubber duckles will be had here. That heal goes out. He was kind of just waiting. He knew his limits. Good pressure by Prolly though. Complexity's still trying to make moves. Sometimes yeah. something that gets them in trouble when they're down in gold. So quite honestly, we, we criticized it when it happened. Prolly going down to the bottom lane and Robert coming to the mid lane has worked out great for Complexity. Prolly has gotten isolated things against Sneaky where he can mm. push him in. And he's playing very comfortably. It's kind of switching up their play style to something Cloudon hasn't necessarily faced in a little while because who in the right mind would swap Yasuo bottom against two yeah. people? But Cloud9 decided to match by keeping the Caitlyn on the Trist. They want to try and deny Robert X Lee's Trist farm. As far as Robert farming on Trist in mid lane, if it's a 1v2, he'll get more farm. And Cloud9 swapped a little late. They ended up losing on both sides of it. And Complexity is somewhat coming back here. It's a quite interesting Shiv Bro build they got going on here. Oh my gosh! No! Oh, he flashes too! Oh! Whoops! There's an error. But they do yeah. save him. He gets out alive. Very back and forth. When you're dodging that many skill shots, what do you do? <laughs> Gotta try to get in front of all of them. Apparently. <laughs> Bubba Dub dodging so well he can't even take one when he wants to. Flashing through the ace in the hole. Oh dear. That really hurts their mid lane chances here, knowing the flash is down on Sona. But Prawley's getting the side turn. Still working that blue buff that he stole from Hyde just a little bit ago. But that doesn't stop them from trading turrets in mid and bottom lane. That's two for Cloud9 right now. Trying to open up the map. They have the last one in the top lane. Guess where they're going. Yep. <laughs> They're trying to get all three down. They're trying to regain control. Mm -hmm. They do not want this game to descend into chaos like their last one did against Complexity. Right. They want to shore up their play, be as crisp as possible, and not make sloppy plays like they've made a few against Complexity in the past. Complexity just throws another 300 into the pink wards, placed out by Bubba Dub towards the dragon area, trying to get a little bit of pressure for themselves. They do clean that up. Still got some time on Dragon, like we were saying. We do see that the theme has been built up by High. Still goes with that for the regen, helping yep. himself out. But the static shivs, pretty interesting for Prowley and Robert X Lee here. A little extra damage added in the fight, but right now, Prowley's using that to push. Yeah, really good amount of farm that Prowley's been able to pick up since leaving the mid lane. And the 80 carries and mids are very adequately farmed, and considering the Renekton versus Shivana matchup, which right. looks so terrible for West Rice early, being down only 30 CS at the 16 minute mark, and now that he's hit level 11, uh, if he can complete his Sunfire Cape, which he has enough gold to, his strength will be somewhat adequate to that right. of Balls. Not looking that bad, considering the very dire looking opening. Right. Do you have to take note, though, a second time we're seeing Renekton Shivana match up Doran's Blade to Shivana's Doran Shield. Renekton, again, coming out on top, so not many changes there. We'll see if Dyer Westrice can make an impact in the team fights. Because they're definitely not getting out of a mistake early game on Cloud9. 
Held solid here. Frawley once again going in hard, but he kind of waits on this one, making sure they have the initiation that they want. And that was very good control and not yeah. going too hard just for balls. They go too far in, Medios would have been able to turn. No. And they were very respectful of the Eve. They didn't use any of their cooldowns, but they did get the ultimate of balls. Probably though sticking around too long. Oh, that's exactly what they were worried about. You think about it, it's definitely gonna happen. A few more hate spikes, the flash happens. But it's also going to be the rotation here coming from the middle lane. High throws down the Mega Inferno. Kez getting hit up. He flashes into the wall. One more hate spike. The Repel's bringing him only to the few minions that are near. Great job, Balls. Getting the kill. Just like old times for Cloud9. What just happened? That too. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> getting back to the bottom lane, though. Balls and Meteos just winning out in the 1v2 yeah. and 2v2 situations. Balls looking to be that pillar of strength that Meteos can go to, meaning any 2v2 that Meteos goes into in that spot, they will have an edge because he knows how far ahead Balls is. It really allows them to manipulate the power. I don't even know what happened mid lane, just a big misplay from Robert X. Lee. Trying to go, we can see probably getting a little too uh, yeah. feeling secure. Exactly, he felt secure because Balls ultimate was already down, but he no longer had Kez backing him up. And it just meant that the level 10, Evelyn, Basically Ooh. could have taken out probably by himself, but the Renekton was there just for the backup. This was curious. So he... Oh, he jumped the bomb. He was going to die from the bomb on the backside. But he could have jumped up to the river brush mm. and not. I don't know. It was a whole I, lot of valiant effort. I think effort. he thought he was dead because High came right. behind him. Right. And he jumped in at the hope of getting a kill. Good replay there. Definitely yeah. sorted out a, a bit. A bit. <laughs> but with another turret, look at the gold. It's still close. It is. It is only a thousand gold difference in anybody's game gold difference. Infinity Edge is very close for Robert X Lee. Different, like we said, 4.10 is going to bring us some new pages in the book to be written here. And Robert goes for his attack speed crit item before that damage item. Let's see if it works out in the long run, because that's where Triss is the best. One thing that's very strange is where is the map pressure from Cloud9? It's something that used to be second nature mm. for them. They would have so much control. Yet, we look at the game now, it, complexity is making all these mistakes, right? But they have the map pressure. They have board coverage in the blue buff. They just Another pressure the top turret. They get an uncontested dragon. And they're actually, after this, going to be a head on goal by 100. What? <laughs> complexity is winning right now against Cloud9. Wow. Super because they scale better late game, too. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Game-changing Aswell plays. Like we said, you can have Robert X Lee or West Rice proccing those out and probably himself. A lot of fights to be had here. And right now, Cloud9, like you said, doesn't have the pressure to act on them. Probably may be focused in the bottom lane a few times, but the team is moving off the ball right now for complexity. 20 minutes in, tying up the game at 4-1, to one, so they're doing it by avoiding Cloud9. Yeah. For the most part, I mean... And when Infinity Edge gets completed onto Robert X. Lee, he's going to be very powerful. He didn't go for that Blade of the Ruined King build to try and get him through the mid game. He's going straight for the late game, and he's actually getting pretty close to that point. About another 600 gold, and he can complete his Infinity Edge on Tristana. A little harass. Good movement by Kez. Oh, okay. <laughs> Still missed out one ward. An unfortunate, unfortunate incident. So we have balls the in the top lane. Are they going to try and catch a fight here? Oh, half HP before you can even enter right. the fight. West Rice almost going down before his team can react. And it looks like Cloud9 with three is pushing off five in the mid lane. You can see Yasuo on the right side dispersing on the mini map. Robert's there as well. That's not really the spot you want to enter a fight. There's no peel if Robert actually comes in here. Yeah. They are pushed back right now. The amount of free harass that West Rice took there really hurts their overall map pressure. It's now back in Cloud9's favor. They do not have the ward control, though. And here's a fight. Robert X Lee jumps straight into the fight. Flashes out a Soul Shackle. The teleport coming in. Balls on the back side. Are they going to be able to stop him? Cannot crowd control under the turret. The crescendo was already used. He has free reign in that area. And Complexity is now trying to backtrack to take out Balls. Robert X Lee is forced to rocket jump over the wall. Balls in another 1v1 situation. The other one was actually a 2v1. They're not even stopping. Low mana here for Cloud9. Can they get the false security? The flash from West Rice. That one connects with the Dragon. And it looks like even though Cloud9 is back and forth, the tug of war is in their favor. Yeah. What is going on this game? It is just 
a little bit crazy. It's very reminiscent of the first Complexity Cloud9 game, where both these teams were not playing their A game, but it was close. One I think Robert time. Exley was trying to alt Sneaky back into a Yasuo alt, uh, yeah. but probably was so far back that he couldn't combo. So it wasn't clean, and Westrice came in from the back and still managed to finish off high anyway. While Westrice was trying to fend off the whole team, Balls was also doing the same thing under a turret, which meant when all was said and done, it was a one for one. Really? It's not just one. <laughs> so much chaos right now coming out at the, the base, the front turrets here leading into the inside of the Nexus is really where all the action going down. Complexity able to fend off. Cloud9 trying to just get them into a false sense of security in each one of these fights. Right now, High's actually a little down on damage. He hasn't gotten a lot of kills in the game. They have the siege pressure. But it'd help if he had a bit more AP as well. Prowley's looking for that second item threshold. Pretty slow game from the standard lane matchup. Yeah, I'm still very impressed that Robert X Lee tried to pull like an insect Lee Sin type kick on an <laughs> 80 carry. He's going to try to rename that one to the Robert X Lee if he could pull it off successfully. Good lord. It is true. And he did, he did West Rice to alt in <laughs> a, as well. A, it didn't work. And B, he burned his flash. But if it did work, that would have been pretty impressive. Because he would have gotten the reset on his jump if yeah. he can instantly kill someone, then he could just hop right back out. Favorite thing in the world. Just say, King me. Keep going. All the way. Infinity Edge is finished on him. See where he has that rapid fire if he scaled it up all the way. It's sitting at four, almost to five, so we'll get max speed on that, 90%. Coming at your face, and it's going to hurt. Level 12, and he's up against a level 11 Sneaky, so if he can get in range, it's definitely going to start hurting. Down to the bottom lane. This should still be a turret for probably no problem. Yeah. What I keep seeing here from Cloud9 is they're not able to pull the trigger on any of their advantages. There's nope. probably split pushing off the side lane. Medios would want to flank and find an initiation. Yeah. They had lane advantages that they were unable to capitalize on. They've gotten a few kills, but they didn't transition those into objectives, and... They really need to make something happen, otherwise this complexity team is going to get another victory over yep. Cloud9. It's kind of, we mentioned it a little bit before, they're both just fight teams. Nobody has that uh -oh. poke, it's gotta uh -oh. be right in the middle! Where's the Mega Inferno Bomb coming in? It's actually down! High's gonna be hit up! The Soul Shackle's not enough to peel the fight! Kez puts himself in a good spot! A flash from Prowley to save that! Tries to get the ult down! Last Breath not working! The shots from Robert X. Oh, oh. He gets headshot on the way in! Or it was just a crit! But the red buff now, on to Sneaky! The power cord coming out from Bubba Dub in his stash! And it's gonna be Meteos and Balls running for the hills! Oh. Oh my god, Riv. This game, three for three, not a clean fight. Westright it starts it again. by kicking a field goal. He doesn't hit a single person yeah. with his Javon ultimate, but Zero watch the ultimate of Tristana on the high with the Yasuo. They still pull the combo. Crescendo missed from Bubba Dub completely. Yet Cloud9 was so zoned here. Sneaky was dancing back and forth for most of this fight. Balls is spending most of the time walking around instead of focusing, and because of that, we end up getting this close fight. Oh, he got the crit right before then. Otherwise, this was an ace by Complexity. Even with all of the misplays by Complexity in this fight, they still almost won it. The late game scaling is real for this Complexity team, and they're in position to win this game. And this is not something that Complexity is known to do. Usually, if it's not their lead, it's the falter throughout the game, but now they are holding it, pulling it back 2K, well, 1.3K in the lead right now. Things are making an impact. And Complexity would need to go for this Dragon right now. They have mistimed it, but they might just run straight for Baron. They would have had the edge. There was a no Eve, Renekton, or Morgana ult for this one, Ooh. and they could have fought, but oh. they have just ended up outthinking themselves right here, and it gets checked by Ziggs. Vision. Would they go now? Would they go now? That would be really smart of them. All the vision's gone. They're going to peel off that completely, knowing they also walk back through wards. Oh, yeah, oh wow, probably probably took the low road. He's going to take some damage as well as everybody else took the high road, staying safe. It's coming down to the line here, 25 minutes into this one. We could actually still have a very long game to go with the yeah. amount of fights we're seeing. On to the turret. Balls looks like he's trying to get some shots on with high on the backside. But it's instantly cleared out there. Yeah, deep breaths. Everyone's got to calm down here, but they just go again. West Rice dives in once again. While Balls was so separated from the fight, 
The rubber ducky's down, bumped up, gets hit up, but it looks like they'll be able to get some more off of that crescendo. Oh. Knocked away, unfortunately, and Cloud9 is on their heels now. They know they do not have the strength to win these fights. And Yasuo wasn't in range for Yasuo off that Tristana because it would have been a multiple displacement shot. You could have killed him, but they're low enough. Me. They're just gonna go. Infinity Edge, Blade of the Rune King chunking this down as well. This should be out of there in just a few. Sneaky could get a headshot over the backside, but it's just too dangerous. The smite goes to Kaz, a very close Peacemaker, however, from Sneaky. And Cloud9 watches Baron yeah. go to Complexity. Yeah, the team fighting potential of Complexity is so high right now, and Cloud9 couldn't crazy. pull the trigger in time. Is Complexity Cloud9's kryptonite? Like, seriously, because this could be another win. For complexity over Cloud9. Lemon Nation doing what he can to put ability power and a needlessly large rod under his belt. Will it be enough if the whole team's dealing damage? Because right now they need to be outputting more. 2,000 gold behind is really all complexity has needed to squash the lead of Cloud9. The uncontested dragons have been too much for complexity to get. Slow movement right now, and Cloud9's not even off their side. Really, the wards placed to the bottom side of the map. Let's see if they can get any picks. Because nobody's really got the pick comp. This is going to be hard. Yeah. Medios can't even do flank style ganks. It's all just in your face 5v5 no. fights. And Complexity has actually been the ones initiating all of these. Mm -hmm. West Rice keeps flying in with Shivana alts. Robert X Lee is rocket jumping into Cloud9. And yeah, it's not that's being. That's a little crazy. It's not being punished <laughs> by Cloud9. They're not able to set up their damage in the right way. High's not able to land the poke. They're not capitalizing off of Dark Bindings. Sneaky now with the Phantom Dancer is in a much stronger point to maybe crush Westrise as he comes in. But there is so much dive pressure coming in from Complexity with the yeah. alts, with the Tristana alts that are being used to tr attempt to combo with Yasuo. Oh. That was nice. Oh my again, gosh, again, West Rice is just on full initiation mode. Sneaky doesn't even get a chance to breathe along with Lemon Nation. They're down instantly, and just off on the side, Meteos has to watch it all happen. They had five with the Baron buff, and holy crap, West Rice ran in right there, and they pulled off the combo. Easy inhibitor, maybe the game. West Rice's job for the past three initiations has been to attack things, get the alt up, and use the alt. They have consistently used it every time it's there. Wow. That's really the way you describe this game. They now have a 5,000 gold lead, and as what seen the right world. there, can obliterate Cloud9 when they come in strong. Flashing over the wall first, and then the Shivana ulting. Just from the abyss, Westrise comes in, and they wreck Cloud9 when they fly in there. They get the reset on the rocket Holy jump, moly. and the double kill happens for Robert X Lee. Late game Trist is here, but more importantly, everything is here for complexity. They are making moves right now. The train is on the track, and Cloud9 was also on the tracks during that one. Six to three in turrets, looking to drop one more outside the base to have the map cleared out there, but they've already got the inhibitor turret, so it's going to be one of these side lanes we get on the pressure. With yeah. Baron down, the 50-50 vote starts to turn time yeah. again. Complexity is going to be looking for bottom lane. They have a minute left on the Baron, so they could actually get this one wave at the bottom of the screen you can see of minions as well as this wave that Prawley is up with will be reaching the turret at around the same time. And that's a big opportunity for Complexity to make another dive. Westrice isn't there and his teleport's not up, so it's actually a, an opportunity slightly missed. Uh, but they could have gotten two inhibitors down here. I think they're just going to take the outer turret for Westrice while the rest of Complexity postures. Well, it's definitely not initiation. He's not there to jump in. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they'll just almost use a, Robert again. Almost a tell now. Yeah, right? It reminds me of when CLG jumped in, or it's Double Lift jumped in in the scrim and did the same thing with Trist. Yeah. Looks like it's a real thing now in competitive LCS play. 30 minutes into this game, the turrets are dropping fast. The last outer turret goes down for Cloud9. They are breathing deep inside their base right now. They're going to be able to get be able to get this last initiation in their favor. I don't think they expected this to happen at all, especially no. with the picks out of Champions League. Yeah, another shock here, but I mean, Complexity did pick better late game things in right. every role, and Complexity and Cloud9 didn't beat them early game, so now they're paying for it. So much power. Blade, three blades of the Ruin King doing percent damage shots to you. Oh, it's oh, oh. right from the backside. He's coming from the base. Looks like they're going to have to How did he get this? in there? <laughs> he came from the mid lane, but he just <laughs> surprised everyone and then missed an ultimate dragon. dragon. He just he swooped dragon. in. They have the sustain of Sona as well. 
So he also did a substantial amount of damage for Sneaky, who with no life steal can't heal back up without really going back to the base. The siege continues. Robert actually able to get a few shots on the turret. Even with Ziggs, they Whoa! cannot keep them off the turret. Sneaky can't even be there as well. Beautiful plays from Complexity, and they are making this hard for Cloud9. Yeah, really using the Sona Sustain to their advantage and punishing Cloud9 for having none. Second inhibitor down for Complexity. What a great play of the competition. Oh no! Going down, Elimination goes in. That's a great Soul Shackle. Is it enough chaos to create a opportunity for Cloud9? There's a kill from Meteos. It's gonna be a very chaotic fight. Robert X Lee, a dodge there out in the ace of the hole. Very nice shutdown coming from him, and it looks like it's high and sneaky to clean up. Balls is still there as he home guards out. So a very close fight there. Get the but inhib. with probably going down, Complexity has four people. They know they have two inhibs down, so the game is in their control. Complexity has to make a monumental mistake to clear we go. this one at this point. Uh, Balls, it was kind of a last just effort here, but not synced up. Balls was falling back during all this because he was low as Lemon tried to go in and create the initiation. But the, the follow-up is just not within sync. So much of these Cloud9 fights are them running from point A to point B instead of having yeah. targets that they actually need to focus down. Three of four dragons, one of one barons for complexity. Very interesting and not something we really would have thought from Cloud9. As we were saying, one of the teams that usually adapts faster than most yeah. to a new patch will be the one to turn the game on your head before you even know it happens. And they had a bit of a lead, but they thought that was enough. The rest on their laurels now, it's I mean, kind of hurt them. As funny as it sounds, it all started with that uncontested dragon. They had a 2,000 gold a lead and they hit. just let pressure drop. No, no matter what they were doing in lane, they weren't necessarily coming together as a team, which is so so much what Cloud9 used to be about. And it's the the magic they have yet to rekindle yeah. in this summer split. No joke, man. Dragon's worth more gold. Complexity takes it. They know it. And now Cloud9 is left to adapt on the strategy they thought would work coming yep. into this game. And even though Complexity has played well, they're still not playing optimally. Right. There's been a lot of Strange ultimates of Westrise, some great ones. Prawley hasn't played the cleanest Yasuo game, right. yet he's made a few big plays, and it's just the windows of opportunity. It's like Complexity's always taking shots, Cloud Knight's never taking shots. Good ult across the team, getting about 1500 damage between the members hit. High's still gonna start charging out those abilities. And to look at this game, the time is kind of cresting the same thing we saw last time. Complexity got an inhibitor early at 28 minutes. It took them up to 48 minutes to win. So closing out the game still yeah. seems to be a little bit of a speed bump for them. Well, we have an Infinity Edge on Prawley now. If they, yeah. get, if they get a Siobhan ultimate that hits any squishy target on Cloud9, if we're looking at defensive capabilities of the main damage dealers high and sneaky, it's over. They're just going to be f dead at that point. Got the locket of the Iron Solari on from Kez as well. Keeping Robert X Lee that much more alive. He has been the focus of Sneaky's ace in the hole. And everybody's been trying to flash and do what they can to get in front of that. Static shift, Blade of the Rune King builds coming in from Complexity as they start to finish out the Randuin's home. Got the Zanyas on Lemon as we saw before to the Kale's Crucible. Anything to keep Robert safe. Yeah, double See, thorn mails rushing. being completed by Cloud9. Oh, wow. Well, hopefully keep Robert X Lee at bay a little bit since his only lifesteal is that Blade of the Ruined King. Yeah. Not something that Triss like all that much. No, but it does seem like Complexity has enough diving potential that they can kind of ignore the Thornmail users. That is at least the hope for Complexity as they go for this final standing inhibitor. Well, this is the first time we've seen West Rice kind of holding off on using his ultimate. Yeah, it's like they're just flash and use it. Let's go. <laughs> definitely considering. Good spread here. They don't have V1 that needs to be the siege clear on the turret. Might that just, gives Robert X Lee some shots. just flash and use it. We know he's a loose cannon, but Cloud get initiated on. Goes. He's still not going. Get crowd, tro crowd controlled up. Robert X Lee, they're letting Baron regen them a little bit. Full shot there. Whoa. He gets knocked down. One more bomb over the wall, but he jumps the wall. Rocket jump keeping him safe. Baron yep. now to be the assistance. Now it's the Baron regen and the healing mm -hmm. of Sona. It's just a little while that they wait there and they can get all that back, yet the ultimates are burned by Cloud9. Oh, so what a the game. power of Sona and the disengage from complexity right there. Nine to nine here, Jet, as they approach the base. Again, they've been living here for the past five minutes. They gotta get in one more time. Lifesteal as well on the minion wave. 
Good as new for complexity. <laughs> the only ultimate they used was the Tristan ultimate. So now they did. Now they go. Field Doctor needs some help. Oh, Westrice went over to good satchel. The other inhibitor. Nice wall. That could have been yep. a very big initiation. No, Robert actually forced to jump out there. He heals up in about six shots. Westrice trying to take out this other inhibitor right now. He's big. Instead of the team going for it, but they have dragon. pressure on all sides. And Cloud9 does not have ultimates to initiate. Complexity is walking their way into Cloud9's base. Oh. Sneaky gets rocked. The static shiv proc as well. And an auto attack to come off of that, I believe, with some hits. We're going to see one more push here. Westrice able to take down the inhibitor by himself here. Taking aggression from balls and high at the same time at different well, points. And I cannot believe Complexity is having this much yeah. ease in the base. Three inhibitors down. Cloud9 tried their initiation, they couldn't make it. And now it might be too late when the Super Minions arrive beforehand, the fight. Almost one Nexus turret. Medios can't even get in for a good Agony's embrace. He's forced back to the fountain immediately. That's the ultimate and the follow-up from Brawly once again. The competition easily comes to fruition for Complexity as they wait it out. They're gonna be on the Nexus. A 37 minute game to take down Cloud9. They're getting hit up quite hard. A lot of chaos and they cut off eight minutes from their first game beating Cloud9 to do it again. Sometimes that's just the way the cookie crumbles. What is going on here in the North American LCS complexity? Man, another win over Cloud9 as they try and move up in these standings. And they try new things. Yeah. Tristana Sona in the bottom lane, bringing back the Yasuo for Prowling. Wow. If there was one thing that stood out in this game between both teams, it was their willingness to take risks because Cloud Complexity kept taking shot after shot. Westrise kept flying in. Robert Exley kept rocket jumping, flash initiations, and Cloud9 was just standing still, waiting for Complexity to hit them instead yeah. of taking their own shots. And there were a lot of things that Complexity made you tilt your head at. Yeah. You never thought they would be able to come back from, but it didn't tilt them at all. No. They just knew they needed to get to that point where, as you said, Insect X Lee was jumping in with rocket jump and buster yeah. shotting people into the fight. I mean, I gotta give some credit too to a guy that a lot of people yeah. didn't know existed right there. Oops. Cloud Nine's analyst and coach because they had a team composition and they withstood the historic Cloud Nine or the Barrage, which didn't really seem there in this game. And boy, was their composition well synergized late game. Lucian going through all the way on this one too. An interesting yep. champion select fact. Very interesting to see Robert X. Lee just pick that Tristana right out the gate. So we've seen two Tristanas now today. Both used pretty yeah. well. Much different as far as the overall results. The do. build two, Static yeah. Shiv first. Static Shiv really. first. Trying to awesome. get early wave clear, but mainly accelerating the point at which he could get to his Infinity Edge plus his Zeal item. Something that it took Double Lift a really, really long time to get to. And something Robert got to at a much earlier time point. Right, we saw him coming out kind of piecing the static shift together and they got that perfect kill on Morgana because yeah. like you said, they were had an inkling about Lemon Nation's roam pattern at that time and that gave him a surge of money that I don't think he was expecting, especially yeah. Stana. The kill especially and then the uncontested dragon Twice. they were able to pick up. Yeah. And after that he was even gold with Sneaky, even though the Caitlyn pick seemed to be bullying them in lane. I mean how many times did we look down at that lane and a binding landed under right. Robert X Lee? Or Bubba Dub, and we're like, oh man, that lane's. Oh wait, Sona. It's been a while yeah. since we've seen Sona. We go back to lane in their full yeah. health. How many little sustain patterns is she gonna have to just heal people up a little bit more and more? So new is real. Definitely seeing yeah. some different things. I like it. Hasn't been the same as uh, a lot that we've seen in Europe, but that's what we want: is diversity. Let's yeah, see what absolutely. these players can do. Tristana, not something other people have been picking up. Korea really threatened the Cogma band in almost every game yeah. that we've seen. Right, Europe still super heavy on the Lucian, yep. oftentimes Infinity Edge, but Blade of the Rune King was shown to be very good in one of the games. Complexity with their own special little slice of change as well. A lot of Caitlyn love for the AD carries as well, and we saw that having an effect up to a certain point. The 1v1 fights were going in Sneaky's favor, yep. but Robert actually just got too big. It's something he's very good at, and it's something, you know, we say as complexity has been kind of a team to falter, but now we see them grabbing a lead from being down and carrying it to a win, which it's kind of a new complexity in 4.10. Yeah, we got to see where they end up taking it from here because yeah, that's true. the North American LCS is stronger, and complexity is getting better, 
But man, Cloud9 did not look like a top team in that game. They do not. Complexity moves himself to 4 and 9 now, and we're going to throw it over to Freak, who's joined by two members of the victorious hey, Complexity. Is my email on? Yeah, you're good, man. Thank, okay. yeah, thank you very much, Rave. It's time to welcome Prolly and Robert X Lee to the desk. Don't worry. Your headsets all work. We're going to be happy. Okay. So I want to actually bring something to your attention, Prolly. So you've now beaten Complex or, sorry, Cloud9 twice. Yeah. The only team to have ever beaten Cloud9 twice in the regular season is Vulcan, and they went to Worlds. Are you ready to go to Worlds? Yep, I think this means we're going to Worlds right now. Beating yes. Cloud9 twice, easy. Now it's Worlds. Now it's Worlds. Okay, so uh, let's actually pull our attention to the game in itself because you got a very interesting team composition. Uh, so you put the Yasuo together at the very end, but at what point were you like, Shivana Shasana Yasuo combo? When was that the idea? Ooh, man. Yeah, I don't know. The, I don't feel comfortable telling my strats, but Gosh. I guess I could give a little secret. <laughs> it, it was planned from the beginning. Yeah? yeah. As far as Tristana Yasuo, it's a very broken combo. Oh, well, we actually, we only, we only got it off once that whole game. Yeah. But we've been trying. I would jump onto the carries and just bust a shot and try to hit a carry. And then that's like the delivery for, for Yatsuo. And that was our, our main goal in the game and swapping as soon as we finish a main item. And putting Tristan in middle allows her to farm middle while farming the jungle, the race and wolves, which is why I was able to get items earlier compared to double if earlier on Tristana didn't, didn't get rolling yeah. and couldn't get his main items quick enough. So I have a, lo a lot of follow-ups in this then because there's a lot of things in there. So one, um, the choice of comp, uh, once again going back to that one, was that saying, okay, against C9, was there a specific reason that goes, it was against Cloud9 or, or what was that for? You said you, you knew the comp was, you knew you were going to run the comp coming into the game. <laughs> Funny just... story, the reason why we actually figured out that comp was because our manager was telling us that, oh, because we were playing on, on our Smurf accounts and we were just figuring out lanes what to like troll around and have fun with. And he was like, yo, you guys should play AP Tristana and Yasuo bot lane. I was like, <laughs> I was like okay. Yeah, and, then, and, then when, <laughs> and then we realized, like, dude, the delivery system on Tristana, because her jump is insane, and they made it so that her buster shot uh, range scales with her, with her levels. So you could potentially engage onto their backline within like 2,000, 3,000 range, and it's, it's pretty insane. Yeah, it seemed to work out really well for you guys, and of course, Shivana helped as well. Uh, I want to keep pressing you on the Shivana stuff then. So, um, or sorry, the, the Trisana stuff. So the static shift first. Talk to me about the reason behind that item. Was that to wave clear mid? Was that to make the jungle faster? It's, it, I learned it from, if, you know, if you're familiar with the challenges scene, mm -hmm. his name was Flappy Bearfish. He was- Flappy Bear God. Yeah, that's yeah. where I learned Flappy from Godfish. this first item, static shift. Initially, I was like, man, this guy is silly. <laughs> Good save. Yeah. But I was like, this, this, is, this is questionable. But then once you realize, like, yeah, the, the components to Static Shiv are, are, are awful for lane phase. But as soon as you get to Static Shiv, you have the ability, ability to shove, which, which synergizes well with her explosive shot. So you could clear out waves like, almost instantly before even the minions even hit. And you could just walk away from the lane and just go farm jungle. And that's, that's how I feel that you can avoid Tristana's weak mid game by accelerating the farming phase. That was cool. It actually seemed to work really well for you guys. And as you mentioned, you got ahead. So probably I want to talk to you then about having to play Yasuo in 1v2. You get thrown in there like eight minutes in, and we're like, God, this is going to suck for him. Like, you're already putting yeah. his zigs. So what did yeah. you, you do about that? That actually didn't go as planned. Um, we lane swapped, but we didn't swap when we had enough pressure. So basically Morgana just stayed bot and was able to basically dumpster me with a 2v1. Mm -hmm. Ideally, that swap will go where Morg has to leave bot lane to attend to mid, but they had a Ziggs, so Ziggs kind of shut that down a bit. Yep. So we basically just lost bot turret for free, which wasn't a big deal, because the second our bot turret went down and I stayed bot, Caitlyn could never come to that lane and neither could Ziggs. If you saw at one point they sent Ziggs bot and it didn't work, they sent Caitlyn bot, it didn't work, because, yeah, basically they had nothing to get by being there, and then they could never fight me 1v1 in such a long lane. Nice. So that obviously worked out for you. So let's actually get ourselves then into more of the meat of the game, because obviously you guys did a great job. Pull up our first replay. You had a lot of hectic, a lot of hectic team fights. I think this is actually the one where you tried to uh, bust your shot backwards. This is a three for three in the mid lane. Uh, Robert, you actually want to start this fight since you're the instigator. Okay, so I remember Westry saying that he wanted to initiate. I think I wanted to jump onto, onto high, but... Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, I probably we actually get the combo here, yeah. yeah. The oh my god, this is the, <laughs> literally the one time I was like, oh my god, we actually did it this time. <laughs> was that the comp the entire time? Yeah, that, that was the yeah. comp, I was like, we actually did it. <laughs> and, and I think it went, it went overall. Just see it again, just to make yeah. sure. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we get the combo. Renekton's actually sitting on my face, and I'm just playing back at, at this point. Um, so we, we actually pushed her away, and I think I jump onto Sneaky right here, and he crits me. I, I get crit on him too, so I guess it's fair. But he gets a crit on me on this last shot. I was like, oh my god, I'm so emo right now. And <laughs> from here, it's just, it's, I think, yeah, Bubba gets a kill. And overall, it was a 3 for 3, which is really good because our comp scales a lot harder than theirs just because, just because we had Tristana. Tristana can 1v5 the game once she gets six items. Yeah, and it seemed to work out really well for you guys. You had a really good score. You went 5-2-4 uh, and four that game, so that was pretty impressive. So did I. No, you didn't. You went 1-4, uh, <laughs> and four, probably. Yeah. That's not that was part of the comp, really. Going 1-4. and four. Yeah. You yeah. saw when I ulted onto Ziggs and they all focused me. They're focusing an 0-4 oh champion. Part of the strat. <laughs> part of Be the strat. worth less gold. Get a bunch of death, yeah, no kill sprees. Usually when you see a Yasuo like, slashing on your carries, like, oh my god, protect, the, protect our carries. But they kill him, I get free roam. Oh, good job. Perfect. Yeah, and that worked Planned out. from the beginning, right? <laughs> it's a really complex strategy. Now, moving on to the, the <laughs> second replay we have. It's the mid tier two tower dive. It's the flash uh, Shivana ulti here. Probably if you want to walk us through uh, killing the back line as zero and four. Oh, yeah. So West gets full props to this because he asks, can we dive this? And he says, yeah, and just goes for it. And he actually gets three man on his ult, which is really good because Morg couldn't black shield it. And then the second that happens, all we have to do is just chase them down. And then once they pass that inhib turret, it's like, all right, let's just back up and get that free turret now. Yeah. So, so how do you temper sort of um, the self-control of getting sort of as much as you can from the fight w while not being too passive that we're like just waiting for the late game comp forever? Mm. That's, it's almost like a guess and check. Like you have to kind of practice that in scrims, like going that aggressive and then realizing your limits. That was something we tried in scrims is like diving, practicing diving. So that's why Wes made that call so perfect. And then the second we saw like Renekton was too far out and he was a tank, is like, yeah, let's just cut our wins right there. We got two kills. Let's go take the turret and then play it slower. Uh, in solo queue, that's where the team would dive the Renekton, and then they'd lose their entire lead. So this was yeah. our adaptation to solo queue. Like, let's, let's just go back <laughs> and get the turret instead. It's LCS, not solo yeah. queue. Don't, don't make the same moves. I like that. It's a good choice. Uh, so then, uh, also to think about this game, you talked about your late game being a lot better. C9 had a couple of early game leads. They got, I think they got first blood, if I remember properly. They did a lot of good things. Yeah, you died. That's right. Good yeah. job. Um, <laughs> But uh, how do you sort of withstand that? Because they have this siege of like Caitlyn and Ziggs and like Renekton split pushing. Like, how do you sort of hold on when they're kind of at the gates the whole time? I actually found it really easy. To, usually you're, you're like, oh my god, Ziggs, Caitlyn, they're an amazing siege duo composition. But with our Tristana Yatsu, Yatsu, we can engage whenever we feel like, unless Lemon lands a bind onto you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that ruined our so that, that ruined our comp pretty hard. But that was our, our idea is that if they try to force the siege, then we, we have hard initiate. Yeah. And that was what, why I wasn't too afraid. And if they don't decide to push, then we just farm. And it's either they push and we get a good engage and win the game, or we farm and I'll scale them. Wow. And that seemed to work really well for you guys. So, final question then. You guys face Curse tomorrow. The three teams you have wins over, Dignitas, Curse, Cloud9. Of course, you've now made that 2-0 against C9. Curse, you have a win against. How are you feeling against tomorrow's match? I'm pretty yeah. good. I'm, pretty I'm good. really curious if they'll bait me into picking Yasuo again, just so they can feed off of me. Mm -hmm. But uh, I feel like Yasuo is probably going to be played tomorrow, and I kind of want to play against it or as it and see what he plays. So I think mid will be really fun tomorrow. One final question, actually. How many more times do you mispronounce Yasuo? Yasuo? Yasuo. Yosu? Okay. Yosu. 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 There we go. Yosu. You're pronouncing it wrong. It's Yosu. Yeah. All right, yeah, guys. <laughs> thank you very much. Congrats on the win. We'll see you tomorrow. We're going to move on. People who can speak English correctly. We've got more action coming up after the break. And we'll see how... Shut oh, no, up. Oh, my God. We'll see how oh, you no, guys show us your North American LCS love. Then it's back into the games. <laughs> Evil Geniuses versus Curse coming up next. North American LCS will return soon. <laughs> How funny would it be if we ban Victor? <laughs> Is that even funny? Like, I don't even know. Yeah. Do it for the lols. For the lols. Kaz puts himself in a good spot. A flash for Brawley to save that. Tries to get the ult down. Last breath not working. The shots from Robert X. Oh, oh, he gets headshot on the way in. That was nice. Oh my again, god. Again, West Rice is just on full initiation mode. Sneaky doesn't even get a chance to breathe along with Lemon Nation. Meteos can't even get in for a good Agony's embrace. He's forced back to the fountain immediately. That's the ultimate and the follow-up from Brawley once again. Yeah.